When you're trying to solve a triangle, sometimes what they'll give you is three pieces of the triangle and they want you to solve for all six, so the three other missing pieces. The only issue though here is, is that the way this triangle is drawn right now, it's not what they call rigid. So they're giving us this angle and they're giving us this side and they're giving us this side across from this angle, but there's a potential for one triangle, two triangles, or even no triangles. So how do we know how many triangles there are and how do we solve for those missing sides and missing angles? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to drop a perpendicular like this, okay? And you wanna find out what that altitude is or what that height is, okay? And so the way you would do that is you can just use regular right triangle trigonometry like your Sokotoa. And so you would say, all right, the sine of 30 degrees, okay, Let's put that over here. So we've got sine of 30 degrees equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So that's h over 10. Now if we cross multiply, we get h equals 10 times the sine of 30 degrees, sine of 30. Sine of 30 is a half times 10 gives us five. So this height over here is five. Okay, so you're with me so far? But now here's the thing, when you have this side side angle condition. And the way I've written it like this, it's very descriptive because the lowercase a indicates to us that this is an acute angle, all right, less than 90 degrees. And the side that's adjacent or next to that acute angle, see how I did a capital letter? So that's longer, that represents longer than the side that's across from, okay, across from that acute angle. See how this is shorter, the one next to it is longer? That's what's called the side side angle condition, the ambiguous case. And so what we're doing is we're dropping a perpendicular, but what you wanna do is you wanna look at the side here, the side six, okay? And you wanna realize that they didn't tell us anything about this angle up here at the top. So you could think of this as being on a, on a pivot or on a hinge, and it's very possible that we could rotate this, okay, in such a way that you could actually draw the side six like this, dot, 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 like that, okay? So you see me? So basically it's like, if you think of this as on a, a circle, like this, okay. All we're doing is we're just rotating that side. So there's actually two triangles possible. So when this side opposite the acute angle is in between the altitude five and the side adjacent 10, that tells you that there's two triangles. If this side here was actually shorter than the altitude, like four, when you go to rotate that, okay, you go to rotate it like that, it's gonna be too short. It won't even be able to reach that, that opposite side. So there'd be no triangle. And then if it was exactly five, of course it would be a right triangle. And if this side here is longer than 10, let's say it was 11, this would, the only way it could swing is out this direction. So you would only have one triangle possible. But this is a special case where the side opposite, okay, is in between the altitude and the side adjacent, and we have two triangles. So what I would do at this point is I would actually uh, double down here, okay, in a sense. I would just split them up, okay? So basically what you have is you have let me switch the markers here for us. So we've got this triangle like this, okay? And then we've got this triangle like this. This angle is still 30, this side's still 10, this side's still six, okay? But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the law of sines, okay? And so we're gonna say the sine of 30 divided by six equals the sine of C, we'll call this angle over here C, divided by 10. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So sine of 30, okay, over the side opposite six equals the sine of angle C over its side opposite 10. So if we multiply both sides by 10, 10 times sine of 30, sine of 30 is a half, so that's gonna be five six. So we have five six, and if we do the sine inverse of five six, we get angle C. So let's go to the calculator and let's calculate that so we can get a better idea. And let's just make sure we're in degrees. Okay, so we're gonna do the sine inverse of five, six, which comes out to 56 degrees. Okay, so now you can see this angle here is gonna be the 56 degree one, okay, which is right here, 56. And what you'll notice is, you see how this is an isosceles triangle? Like if this is six, this is also six. What do you know about the base angles of an isosceles triangle? They're congruent, right? So if this is 56, this must be 56 which means that this angle here must be 180 minus 56. So that's gonna be 124. So this is 124. 
Now what you can do is you can add these two angles together and subtract from 180. Same thing here, add these two angles together, subtract from 180. And then what you would do is you would do the law of sines one more time, okay, using this angle on this side and uh, this angle here and this side to solve for that missing side. But the main thing I want